Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a Husqvarna 455 chainsaw. The customer complaint is that it leaks fuel. Well this thing's been sitting on the incoming repair shelf for a while and there was no fuel underneath it. So we're going to look into the tank here and see if there's any clues as to why it might be leaking fuel. So it looks pretty normal in there at first, but we do find that it has a aftermarket fuel filter on it. Not that that's a problem or a contributing factor. It's just a clue that someone's been working on this themselves or they took it somewhere else for service because that isn't a filter we would have put on there. But there's your problem right there. That ain't no good. We got a big wet spot on a bench. So it does leak fuel, but it only leaks fuel when it's on its side, not when it's sitting up like it is now. So we're going to pop the hood and take a look underneath, see if there's anything to see. Initially, can't really see much with that air filter on there. And then I start thinking, well, you know... It doesn't matter where it's leaking. If it's got a scored cylinder, we're not going to fix the leak anyway. So let's look inside. So that, that cylinder looks really nice. It's clean in there. Like this thing doesn't have a lot of run time. But I think it had the wrong spark plug in it, so we swapped in the right plug. Now let's get back to our fuel leak. First thing I want to do is drain out what's left in the tank. And the stuff that was in there, I mean it wasn't, it probably wasn't a running issue problem. Uh, because if that stuff stunk really bad, I would be changing out that greasy shop rag on my bench right now. So we want to fish the fuel line out of the tank, remove the filter, and put our pressure pump on that line. We're going to put 10 pounds of pressure on here and see if that fuel line is leaking. So you can see I'm wiggling the line around. And that's just in case there's any cracks in the line that, you know, we're exposing them. But it held 10 pounds of pressure. Our leak has nothing to do with the fuel line. At least the one that the filter is on. And you can see we put a original equipment Husqvarna fuel filter on there. So now let's take a look at the fuel return line. It goes from the purge bulb back down into the tank. And in fact, that line is broken at the top of the tank. So when we laid it on the side, all the fuel just ran out that return hole. The little piece that's stuck in the tank, that part of hose, uh, I can't quite pull it out of there. So we just pushed it back down into the tank, get it out of our way. There's the line we want to replace, and here's the new line. So I'm just going to route the line underneath the intake boot. And it takes a little bit of fumbling around, but it can be done. Now we'll put the line on the purge bulb. And this return line goes on the long stem of the purge bulb. Cutting a taper on the end of the fuel line. And then we'll push it down through the hole in the tank. Once the lines push through the tank, we can 
look into the tank and decide if we need to grab that line and pull it through a little bit further or if it's in there far enough which it is the other thing we could have done while we were right there was grab that old piece of fuel line that I pushed into the tank so now we're trimming the line to length and then we'll push it onto the purge bulb All right, everything looks pretty good underneath here. We'll put some fuel back in it and see if it leaks. It's not dripping. That's a good thing. Let's fire this thing up and see how it runs. Yeah, it's priming up nice. Choke. Okay, so it ran, but the chain was spinning at idle. Now, there's a couple reasons for that, and I know a lot of you are screaming at the computer right now about how I need to look at the clutch spring, but that's not the problem here. I'll show you what it is. First thing we got to do is remove the clutch for inspection. I set the stop switch. I'm going to put an impact on here and buzz the clutch off. It's on there pretty tight though. We'll get the big ugga dug out. So the big one's not working and it doesn't feel like it's hammering. And even though the decomp had been pushed in, when I pulled it back out, it didn't make a difference. I think the, the weights and the, the hammer on that impact aren't working. Because now the little one spun it off with the decomp pulled out. Meaning we have compression in the cylinder that the impact is banging against. When the button was pushed in, we didn't have much compression there. So anyway, we got the clutch off. I forgot why I took this apart. I forgot why I took the clutch yeah. off, though. Nope, now I remembered. You know, my, my short-term memory is kind of bad, but my short-term memory, that's really bad. So the clutch springs, they look fine. These springs are rarely bad. I mean, they will break, but it's rare. So what else could it be? Well, this oiler worm gear that meshes with the clutch drum these things can get tight on the crankshaft and you can see I can barely spin it and it pulls off of there really hard now you can field fix these things by taking a file and cleaning out the inside diameter of that bushing or that worm gear you can see how the new one just spun on there real nice so uh, we're putting a new one on and we're greasing everything up. We'll grease the crankshaft. We'll grease the clutch bearing or drum bearing. And we'll put some grease on the worm gear as well. That thing spins on there really nice. So what happens was when the crank is turning and if that worm gear is binding on there, it's also turning the worm gear. And if it's turning the worm gear that's meshed into the clutch drum, 
well then you're turning the chain and that's why the chain would spin at idle sometimes it's uh, and I didn't I got to go back and look at the video and see if the chain was turning while I was pulling the cord but sometimes it can make it really hard to start too just because you're trying to turn the chain while you're pulling the cord so we'll buzz the clutch back on hold a little bit of rope out so when it binds you see it the shock was taken up by my hand and not by the cord and the starter pulley. So that looks a lot better. The chain is, uh, or the drum spins free on there. So before we put the bar on, you notice we're cleaning the rails and I'm blowing all the debris away from the nose sprocket. We don't need to fill up that bearing with all the schmutz that's in the rail. Let's see what it does now. Doesn't do anything. That's not good. It's not getting any fuel. So this is a 2010 model, and I would be surprised if this 10-year-old machine has had the carb looked at yet. I mean, I saw some uh, basic maintenance going on, but. This doesn't seem like it's getting any fuel. So we want to look at the micro screen. We want to look at the metering diaphragm. And you can see that there is some scum and debris and some schmutz in that micro screen. Although it looks like some fuel could still get past it. So let's take a look at the metering diaphragm. Yeah, it's pretty stiff. So a stiff metering diaphragm may not allow uh, the needle to open and let fuel in. So now that we've placed both those pieces, we're calling that a carb refresh. We'll uh, put it back together and see if it runs now. Priming, nice. Cripes! Oh, that ain't gonna work. Brake sounds like it's fine. I got a new brake on it. Oh. What's the matter with it? What's the matter with it? I sucked up the f shop rag. That's what's the matter with it. <laughs> I looked right at the rag and thought, oh, better watch out for that. <laughs> you got that on camera? Well, yeah, I guess I do. Yeah! I'm <laughs> a blooper! I'm a blooper! He sucked a rag right in the middle. I always run it over this towel and I thought, one of these days I'm going to catch that damn towel. <laughs> well, it was bound to happen sooner or later. But luckily that rag just comes right out of there. So we'll put this back together and try it again. So the machine's going to need some more carburetor adjustments, but we got it to run. The chain's not turning at idle. 
That's all I'm going to have for you in Husqvarna 455 in a greasy shop rag that got revenge. Thanks for watching. Later.